We've been keeping you updated about Byline Time's brilliant reporting on the allegations facing Dan Wooten, and one of his employers has been paying attention to the revelations too. Wooten has had his Mail Online column paused while they undergo an investigation into his behaviour. Dan Wooten stands accused of using fake identities to trick people into sending him explicit photos and encouraging adult entertainers to film people having sex without their consent. The Mail Group gave this statement. The allegations are obviously serious, but also complex and historic, and there is an independent investigation underway at the media group, which employed him during the relevant period. In the meantime, his freelance column with Mail Online has been paused. The news comes as Byline have published the information which they believe confirms Dan Wooten was behind the online persona Martin Branning. Now, it was the Martin Branning character who had offered many people with connections to Wooten money for explicit content. It's also the Browning character who sent emails which have been compared to blackmail. So what is the proof, according to Byline, that Dan Wooten is um, this Browning character? So they write this. GB News star Dan Wooten twice used an identical password as the catfishing pseudonym Martin Browning and Maria Joseph to subscribe to a movie-sharing website, Byline Times can reveal. The presenter used the password along with the email addresses for his private web domain, danwooten.com, and also his official News of the World account. They were leaked and published on a publicly available data breach directory in October 2018. Alongside Wooten's two email addresses revealed in a dump of login details for over 700,000 users of the defunct film indexing service mydvd.overhere.com were the email addresses Byline Times revealed Branning and Joseph had used to trick and bribe scores of men into sharing compromising sexual material over at least a 10-year period. All four of the accounts used the same unusual eight-character password. Of course, Dan Wooden has previously denied any criminality, but never explicitly denied using the pseudonym Martin Branning. In the case of these accounts we've just discussed, Byline write this, Byline Times have asked the new legal representatives for Dan Wooden detailed questions about the password breaches. In response, they did not deny the connection between the four accounts and appeared to confirm that Wooden used the password for the accounts mentioned. Aaron, It's always interesting when, you know, an employer makes a decision about one of these cases because it means that all of the legacy media, which, you know, have been, they seem to have been worried about whether to touch this story. Now the BBC, um, the Mirror sort of websites that haven't really talked much about Dan Wooten now say, oh, Dan Wooten suspended by Mail Online, or at least his his column has been put on pause. Um, So it gives an excuse for the legacy media to talk about it. It's a similar issue with Hugh Edwards. I mean, how significant will, will this be? for Dan Wooten and for GB News, who are still standing by their man. This is one of those hooks which allows other papers to report on a story which is ongoing, even if the person involved is particularly litigious, which doesn't appear to be the case with Wooten, but you know, we, we, we don't know for sure what kind of legal advice he's getting in, in that regard. I mean, he's clearly going to go after byline, it seems, but with regards to others who are reporting on it, I mean, that, you know, it, it's, it's less clear. GB News are looking at being, by their own words, this came out from their top guy in the last week, they're looking by 2028 to be the number one news brand in this country. That's what they're saying. Now, given the BBC, I think that's pretty audacious and perhaps unlikely, but they, they, they could be significantly bigger than the likes of Channel 4, Sky News. Dan Wharton is their number one guy in terms of viewership right now. He's their number one guy. He's their ace in the hole. Um, And so for this kind of reporting on somebody who could be so central in the emergence of a really important new media outlet is hugely important journalism um, and shouldn't be taken lightly. And the professionalism and diligence and the legaling around this kind of stuff, second to none. And it does show you, Michael, the people at Byline, people at Navarra are doing work that you're not really seeing from some of the older, more legacy, more august outlets out there. And it doesn't seem to be stopping anytime soon. So this reporting is important. Uh, It's having legs. And I suspect we're going to hear many, many stories to come. 